Hi guys, with a new Art Life episode. Hi. This is uh, 36, can you believe? Episode 36, woohoo! It has been a lot and a hell of a week, huh? a lot of production going on this week. If you like what you see today, please give us a thumbs up, uh, give us a, a follow, a subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell and that really helps us out with the channel if you do. Hi, I'm John and this is Bogdan. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. So, what are we talking about this week? A lot has happened this yeah, week. It has uh, been a busy week. It has, uh, there are so many projects I started, and a lot of them were completed, mm -hmm. that it feels like I've done nothing. I was like completely lost. I said, oh, what have we done this week? So, I started a, uh, a new project on a... Um, uh, square uh, photographs oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and I've done a, a new floral one made out of magnolia seeds that's completed. I had to catch up with the printing of these large photographs for Lydia, uh -huh. which uh, there were some hic hiccups there too. I'll show you, we'll talk about that in a second. And um, God, what happened? Um, we had the art chat, we have all kinds of things. A lot going on. We also had a uh, photo, um, excuse me, a photo zine, zine fest, uh, and uh, lots going on in the studio. Just busy week. It's, that's a good thing, right? Not to mention the pressure of these projects we want to start. So let me talk about uh, about the, the a little about these square projects. Mm -hmm. I, I I truly thought that by the end of the, the this week they'll be at least ready. But now yeah, they were absolutely right. now it's it's impossible. So guys, I don't have a large printer in the studio, so I'm at the point now uh, that I want to try to create larger pieces with the technology I have available. So. Uh, one of the very first projects I thought is like uh, print five by five um, square of uh, a photograph and then lay them out on a larger scale. And this is going to be the first one, it's going to be an abstract of a um, um, sunset. It's, it, it went very well, um, I like how it looks so far on the table. And uh, on Friday, I went to buy a larger canvas so I can mount these things on. And guess what? I didn't think they are 5x5 five five and the, the canvas is 30 by 26 or 24, which means they won't perfectly fit on, on, on the canvas. So now I have to reshape them to 4x4 four four inch. Or you could get a different size canvas. Yeah. I can, there is that option. I can do that too. Well, it doesn't have to be a canvas. You could put it on a board and cut the board to the size you want. And I, I, I mean, I painted it in, on Saturday uh, on black, but now you, you, I'm, at, I'm at your point now. Why don't I get a 30 by 30 uh, square canvas, canvas yeah. get done with this project and use the other one for a... For the next brilliant for a idea. smaller design. And um, so yeah, I'm very happy. It looks very beautiful, uh, unusual, and um, it, yeah. it's so funny because it, I saw the picture before it was kind of deconstructed. It's beautiful, and then when I saw the actual squares, mm -hmm. they, they're they're ethereal. They just take on a completely different look, which is amazing. And then of course when you put them all together. It's, it's really kind of haunting. Yeah. And the, the, the thing is, and particularly this piece, because it's an abstract, I am not going to put the wire right away. Oh, okay. I am going to let you, the collector, decide how you want to place it. And depending, if you want to buy it, then I'm going to let you decide how you want to be. And then I'll put the, 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 the wire on.
very busy with these Christmas ornaments this year. Oh yeah, I do this every year. I, I try and create. We're, we're going to have a holiday event on December the 4th at the studios. And uh, every year I try and, and do a few Christmas ornaments. And they always sell, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't ask much money for them. It's a way of getting people into the studio and letting them have an impulse buy. So they're only $5 uh, a piece, uh, and I'm doing some uh, glass globes that I was actually, I shot spray paint into them and then swirled around some uh, pouring paint medium they're in, in gold. They're yeah, quite yeah. lovely, yeah, yeah, and a lot less work than the ones I tried last year. But uh, yeah, I, those are all done, and I have some little flat wooden ones that I'll only be charging $2 for. Uh, but they're they're just kind of an abstract spider. But they're great, actually. They're I, I look great, at them. Yeah. I, I I got to to see the um, uh, time lapse of the creation of these uh, uh, ornaments, and it was quite impressive and, and and very very lovely. Every year I do a different a different style, and uh, they're all ready finally. And that's the first time I've been ready this early. <laughs> but that's because I have a home studio. So guys, don't forget, come to the Studio 111 in Silver Street Studios and get these sets as they are available. Good news, uh, um, Q Imaging just called me and to inform me that uh, uh, the pictures for Lydia are ready and I'm very excited to, to see how they look like. Uh, so I'm going to take you with me uh, for a trip uh, to Q Imaging to pick up the artwork. So follow me. Oh, let me tell you a story with Lydia's uh, prints. Oh, yeah. There mm -hmm. was, there was, they're done, they're lovely, but there were these hiccups, which I, you know, it happens from time to time when things don't go well. First, uh, they were printed, but they were mounted on a two inch depth uh, stretch bars. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that, I, the poor guys at the studio, the printing studio, had to do it again and put it on a 1.5 stretch bar because they don't fit the frame. Lydia wanted and when that was done I brought the pictures back in the studio and like 10 minutes right after I came in the the male guy came with a package with the frames I opened the, the box guess what one frame ah so get to the company back so, here. and you needed to uh, yes mm -hmm. get back to the company in North Carolina guys you send me you oh, only one frame I'm running out of time here, I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. We're gonna send this to you uh, overnight. So hopefully he is gonna be here Monday and put this together. But otherwise the project looks fantastic. The pictures are great. And um, thank you, Lydia, if you're watching this. Magnificent, they, the pictures are great. Hi everybody, it's now the end of week four, we're starting week five. Uh, I wanted to give a kind of an update on where I was in my art project. 
Uh, I've been looking to create more illumination in my work and uh, I'm going to do one large piece which I will be starting very soon, like today. And uh, one of the suggestions I had from Doug last week in the, in the Thursday group was if you're looking to, to create some, some kind of interior illumination, have you worked on aluminum? And I had not. So I went ahead and bought a couple of, of uh, sheets of aluminum. Uh, they're just 12 by 12. They come with this, with this film on them. And uh, so I, I said, let me try that because there is a certain reflectivity underneath that I actually tried once with aluminum foil uh, and, uh, and had some luck with. So thanks for the tip, Doug. And I did work on these. Uh, what I found out immediately is that you have to really score them up quite a bit. The sandpaper, I use steel wool uh, because other than otherwise nothing would stick to them. Uh, so I did have to score them up and I did find that, you know, I've been trying to use lighter kind of washes of color so that there's some translucence in the paint anyway and they just wouldn't stick even, even after scoring. So I'd have to use a thicker paint uh, which of course is more opaque. So uh, I was able to experiment around and try and, and di do it, and I believe that I got some, some progress. I put some light, uh, lighter paint in the middle uh, and tried to, uh, to create some sort of uh, illuminated essence underneath. I think it was successful. Uh, I have them here. Uh, probably should see the front. And there is a, there is a real sheen where that I was able to get the thinnest I could get the paint. There is some illumination coming from that aluminum underneath. Uh, so anyway, I think it was a great project. Uh, thanks for the tip. Uh, I'm gonna go with canvas on the large picture though, and I'm ready to get started. Great week. My Mexico project, I'm working with uh, my art lab in uh, Mexico City through the uh, PRPGMX with Michael Swank, uh, that uh, residency program that I'm in. And so our art lab is now on week five of eight, so we're, we're, we're nearing the, the finish line. I've done all the kind of preliminary studies that I'm going to do, and I've shared some of those with you. I did uh, uh, some in white, I did some in green, and I did those uh, those um, square uh, aluminum pieces that, uh, that I presented before, and uh, uh, did a study with the floral uh, of the flowers dropping down on canvas, one kind of remaking one that I had loved in the past. And that's the one I'm gonna use for my main project. So I have now my big canvases up on the wall, ready to start today, and uh, I, I'm gonna try and achieve that falling flowers it, with a kind of illuminated background. That's, that's going to be my, my finishing project. So yeah, it's going well. It's a lot of work. What, what we decided was when you're going from a canvas at 16 by 20 with flowers this big to a larger picture, do you keep the flowers this big or do you make them bigger to, to kind of match the proportion of the smaller example? I and think I would go a little bigger. Because it's funny, everyone in the lab that night said, keep the flowers small, it will be much more impressive. And I thought, do you know how many flowers that is? So we'll see. I, I, like, I like bigger things. I like to connect with, with bigger elements, uh, but that's a, a test. That will be a the question of test. you paint. <laughs>
I started the week doing the, a new piece, uh, a floral piece. Uh, this time is made from uh, magnolia seeds. And uh, I did the, the a high resolution scan of those uh, uh, individual seeds and uh, I placed them on the flatbed on a, on a circle and I said, okay, yeah, this gives me a huge image and I don't have the, the um, technology to print large sizes and I said I have to be creative with this. So what I've done, I, uh, I, I designed a 30 by 30 inch uh, photograph and I, I divided in four and I, um, I print it on 15 by 15 um, cotton rug paper and the final image is going to be 34 by 34 inch. And for that one, I will have to go to the international molding here in town to, to look for some uh, framing ideas. Hey guys, just finished the open Saturday, the third open Saturday at uh, Silver Sea Studios. It wasn't uh, an amazing uh, Saturday, but um, I met some uh, great people uh, considering purchasing some art and um, they promised to return soon. Uh, that was one. It's now about uh, 5.30 and I'm going to see what John is doing here at the Zine Fest in Houston. So, so let, me, let me show you around. It's great, it's going well. It's kind of quiet now. There's quite a few people here earlier. What's, uh, what's the best seller? The best seller is Inheritance. And AB Cat. I've now sold everything except for my favorite. Why not? I wonder. I moved them. And uh, to see if and somebody did look at it when this guy no no purchase. <laughs> How was Zinefest? Zine, Fest? Zine uh, the uh, Uncle Bob's Zine Mar uh, Photo Zine Market, it was called. And it was great. Uh, we haven't had one in so long. It's been two years since we've had a live zine fest. Uh, and uh, they're cropping up all over. I saw there was just one in San Francisco this last week, um, LA area, I think, and uh, Albuquerque. There, various ones are happening. They happen all over the country. 
and, and some people travel and, and make the circuit. But uh, what I love about zine fests is that they're, they're really, really organic. They just kind of spring up. The kinds of people who show at the tables are completely different from anyone we meet at the studios. Uh, it's usually a much younger crowd. I'm, in fact, I think I was definitely the oldest guy there. Uh, that happens more and more in my life. Funny that. Well, but uh, you're younger inside. I'm younger inside than many people are on the outside. But, uh, and that's just product. You meet a completely different group of people than I would meet in the studios. This is a largely millennial crowd, um, people who are really into printing and into publishing uh, and into comics and things like that, this, this graphic nature. And this particular uh, zine fest was sp uh, specifically about photo-related uh, zines. And so zine is just short for magazine. These are homemade, generally independent publishing movement. And it's been around for years. I knew about them because of libraries and originally a lot of zine fests happened in libraries. Uh, but they've been around forever. The crowd was great. It was, it was a steady crowd. It wasn't a huge crowd, but the venue was quite interesting. Uh, it's a, a, it's called en Rincón Social, and it's a group of, of art studios with, a, with some exhibit space uh, on the east, east side of downtown Houston. What's next? Next, we've got a lot going on still. Uh, we have another Zine Fest coming up in November. On the 13th, we have our open days on the 2nd and 3rd Saturdays. We are looking at trying to put together a group show just with the people geographically situated close to us in the, in the, uh, in the studios. And uh, of course, then we've got Mexico. Uh, you've got the Fane uh, exhibition coming the end of the month. And if we're gonna start doing these exhibitions in the studio, just of our work, we were gonna start that in December, which means I have to get my studio completely gutted, everything off the wall, walls repaired, and come up with an exhibition for us to start in December. So we've got our plates really, really full as we uh, get ready for Thanksgiving. And it should be fun. None of it's undoable. It's just a lot of work, right? But before the, even before the fine feria, at the beginning of uh, November, like right away, uh, Michael Schwank in uh, Mexico City would like to create a preview exhibition of my photography series. And um, hopefully, Hopefully the people who are keeping, who are storing my art in Guadalajara will send this uh, to Mexico City in time for him to display them. It, there's a lot of complicated things here yeah. that I can't control. This is pretty much what we had to report. Busy, busy, busy. And a little stress here and there going yeah, on. Stress is good for us. We're still browsing for the van. I haven't got that far to to, to research. Anything. I've narrowed it down in my head to two, two options, either yeah, I a Sprinter haven't... or a, a Ford Transit, but you know, it, we it, haven't it, really looked yet. It takes me hours to decide what pair of shoes I want. I can't tell you how much time I need to look for a car. It's like passing a bill in Congress to get him <laughs> to buy something. <laughs> but anyway, guys, it was great to see you again. And uh, please follow us, like us, and uh, We'll see you next time. Right? Have a great week. Bye. Bye.